G'day boys, and do you ever come across a story that's so crazy you just go, uh? Well, this is one of the crazier ones, as it's about Masuyasu Maino, the Japanese right-wing extremist adult film star who 30 years after it went out of fashion deliberately crashed his plane into the home of his idol, who was a right-wing extremist Yakuza leader. Trust me, you're going to want to watch the entirety of this, as it's a wild story involving a military coup and one of Japan's largest political scandals. So, first of all, let me introduce you to our protagonist, Mitsuyasu Maino who was born in 1946 at a turning point in Japanese history. You see, Japan at this point was calming down with the whole, uh, you know, and converting to more of a, you know. But not everybody was into the whole thousand episodes of One Piece thing. To give an example of the general atmosphere Mayuna was raised in, I'll mention one of his first idols, Yukio Mishima, who was one of the major advocates of restoring Japan's World War II samurai code. In 1970, Mishima staged a coup by going to a military base, kidnapping its commandant, then yelling a speech at the soldiers about how they should overthrow the government in 1947 constitution. The soldiers, who all by this point weren't likely to be the biggest fans of splattering themselves on the decks of American ships, began to laugh at Mishima and taunt him. Therefore, Mishima did what I always feel like doing after bombing social interaction this hard and committed seppuku. Unfortunately for him, though, his assistant who was supposed to end his suffering by decapitating him must have gotten some mad premarital pussy, because he was god-awful with the blade, and took free swings before somebody stepped in and finished him off for him. A year after this coup in 1971, Mayuna would have his destiny decided when he attended a right-wing meeting and fresh off the orcs chord with Song of the Race, an ultra-nationalist song by the antagonist of our story, Yoshio Kadama, who was a Class A war criminal that had been left off of his crimes by the CIA since apparently war crimes against Chinese people don't count. In exchange for his freedom, Kadama helped the CIA root up pro-union leaders. These CIA connections and the wealth he made plundering innocent Chinese civilians would later help Kadama become one of the most important power brokers in Japan, allowing him to play a key role in revitalizing the and providing the aid needed to elect at least two prime ministers. As for the protagonist of our tale, Mayuno had dreams of becoming an actor but wasn't able to find much work and so turned to porn to supplement his income. He would go on to appear in 20 softcore porn films which were popular in Japan and at the time made up two thirds of their films. But hey, as they say, if it's pixelated, it's family friendly. One of these movies would prove oddly prophetic as it showed Mayuno, who was an amateur pilot, having sex while he was flying a plane. Mr. Sins? Please take note. Unfortunately for Maino, his world would come crashing down in 1976 when his beloved idol Kodama was found to be a part of one of Japan's largest scandals. As he had been taking millions of dollars in bribes from everybody's favourite supplier of journalist killing machines Lockheed in order to bribe other Japanese politicians, including the Prime Minister, to get them to buy their planes which they were having a hard time selling, such as the F-104 fighter jet. Since I'd imagine F-104s earning the nickname Widowmakers due to how many of their own pilots they killed wasn't quite the same selling point to the Japanese military as it once was. Understandably, the scandal was huge, and even the Prime Minister got arrested, though, don't be fooled in thinking there was any form of justice. Pretty much all of their higher-ups, including Kadama and the Prime Minister, managed to skip punishment for one reason or the next. Mitsuyasu, however, took it about as personally as a twitch simp when he finds out his favourite streamer is not a virgin, deciding that Kadama had broken the Bushido Samurai Code, especially because Lockheed had supplied the planes that had previously bombed Japan, and thus, he deserved death. Seeing as Maino wasn't exactly the Dragon of Dejima, he instead opted to use his skills banging on a plane to bang his plane into Kadama's house, as the mob boss had been confined to his bed as he was recovering from a stroke, though, unfortunately for him, not the type of stroke caused by Mayuno's films. Since this was an operation that would require the utmost secrecy, on the day of the attack, Mayuno showed up to rent a plane at his flying club with two friends, all dressed in kamikaze uniforms. <laughs> when asked by the airport staff why they were wearing the equivalent of an SS uniform at a synagogue, Mayuno told them they were just preparing publicity for a film on kamikazes. Somehow the airport staff didn't realise that they were about to have a very strange call with their insurance company, as they were able to rent two planes and even took the time to take some photos of themselves. After taking the photos, Mayuno took off with him in one plane and his friends to record him in another. Then, after flying around Tokyo for an hour, Mayuno then radioed to them that he had business in Setagaya, a bit of an understatement, all things considered. He then circled Kadama's house twice and shouted on the radio, Long live the Emperor, and crashed his plane into the second story veranda of Kadama's house, killing him instantly and injuring two of Kadama's servants. Kadama, on the other hand, was unharmed as he had been resting in a different part of the building and was carried away by his bodyguards on a blanket. Yet while Maino might have failed in killing Kadama, he did succeed in waking Japan up to the corruption that allowed these men to prosper at their expense and avoid justice, resulting in widespread reform and for Kadama and the Prime Minister to be prosecuted. Yeah nah, obviously not. Kadama died eight years 
isolator of natural causes and pretty much none of Japan's higher-ups ever served so much as a day in jail. As for Lockheed, well, it's still profiting off of causing the death and suffering of millions. Honestly, the only reaction I actually liked was of Kaichi Ito, the Director General of Training for the Japanese military, who despite disapproving of Maino's attack, Commander Maino, saying he would give his highest score in his technique a name, especially since he couldn't have known where Kodama would be in the house. The reason why I love this reaction is that he was a fucking kamikaze himself. Moral of the story. Well, the moral of the story is something that I'll leave for you to find for yourself, but also to find out what those morals and how you found them say about you. Anyway, that's all for now. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.